Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast special emergency show. I teased it during the regular show today that we are doing this. We have two important things to do and also the picks for wild card weekend. Okay, so Bill Belichick resigns as Patriots head coach. Um, This was something that we saw coming back in October when we heard rumblings that there been some turmoil in the organization. Um, it's a great run. Six Super Bowl titles. Nine Super Bowl appearances. And they were a couple plays away from being 9-0 in those Super Bowls. But they're also a few plays away from being 5-4 and four rather than Six and three because of that Atlanta comeback back in the 2016 season. That was Super Bowl 51. So, um, fabulous career for Bill. Um, he's beloved in New England, always well, always has been. Um, same with Brady. Um, and He's the greatest NFL coach ever, in my mind. But the greatest football coach ever. Um, you could argue him and the other gentleman that retired um, this week, Nick Saban, who we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So what's next for New England? Um, it turns out that they had a succession plan in place that is to replace Belichick with linebackers coach and former player Gerard Mayo. And he is now the head coach of the New England Patriots. Um, So, I'm not so sure this is going to work. I think New England could have done better. Um, But the only thing that I'm going to say is that it's better than Josh McDaniels. Because we know what Josh McDaniels is. Um, But the case, best case scenario is that he's this year's Antonio Pierce. And he gets a lot out of these players and gets them to overachieve like how Bill did in some of those weaker teams that he had in New England, other than the past couple years after Tom left. Um, But we'll see about Mayo. We'll see if there's any other changes to the coaching staff, whether it's offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, etc. Um, I haven't really heard much about that, whether Bill O'Brien – is going to remain there, or um, if Josh McDaniels might return there. And the other thing that is a takeaway is that the Patriots are a family organization. They hire from within the family. And that sometimes could be very dangerous. Just see the New York Giants, um, other than Dave Ball Shane, they've hired in the family Obviously, when they fired Jerry Reese, they hired Dave Gettleman, who was a a part of the family. And then that, obviously, was a disastrous era of management. Um, but that's what worries me for the Patriots with the nepotism that could be going on in the organization with um, Kraft's kids being too involved in the organization, um, just like how John Mara's kids are involved in the Giants organization, and that obviously has not gone well, but it could go the other way. Like we've seen with Dallas, Stephen Jones is very heavily involved with Cowboys drafting and decision-making, and that's actually turned out for the better for the Dallas Cowboys. So um, maybe you can look at it from that standpoint too. It, you just um, need to have smart people. If it's family, just make sure they're smart and they know what they're doing. So, um, we'll see how it works out with Mayo in New England. Um, Like I said, it's better than Josh McDaniels. They could have just promoted Bill O'Brien, who's had experience, um, and did a good job with the Texans. I just think the downfall for his Texans tenure was that they made him the GM, too, and that was ultimately his downfall. And when you're the coach and the GM of a team, it's always your downfall. Doc Rivers with the Clippers. 
Tom Thibodeau with the Timberwolves. Um, Belichick now, soon to be Popovich outside of locking into Victor Wembanyama. Um, so we've seen that in sports where the coach is also the GM and it just falls flat on your face. So um, Bill O'Brien, the coach, I think is a better was a better coach than giving credit for the Houston Texans and, of course, with Penn State. So they could have gone there as well. Um, but now what's next for Belichick? Um, obviously he still wants to keep coaching. Um, there's jobs available that, um, could entice him and some that could open up that could entice him. The Chargers, um, is probably the best open job because of Justin Herbert and the fact that he's still young. But they have a lot of salary cap issues, which may have Belichick concerned. Atlanta, there might be a quarterback away from being the team in that division. Um, you also have Washington, who's bowed out, but that's the worst situation, arguably, of any of the teams. Actually, no, that's a lie. Carolina's the worst situation. But I don't think Bill wants to go to Carolina. Um, because that is an absolute shit show there. Um, but there could be jobs that could open because of teams falling flat in the playoffs. What if Dallas loses the Green Bay on Sunday? That job's going to open. And I think Bill would be intrigued by Dallas's talent, but I don't know how he would mesh with Jerry Jones, although Jones is the one along with his son, Stephen Jones, doing the decisions. And Bill will just coach, and I think that would be better for Bill. Um, could Jaguars open up unexpectedly? Um, just so they can get Belichick. Bill Belichick's an upgrade over Doug Peterson, although Peterson beat him in a Super Bowl, but that was a fluky Super Bowl. Let's be real. Um um, there's also the possibility of Philly falling flat on their face on Monday night. Maybe Sirianni's out. You're hearing some rumblings that he could be in trouble. And the Bucks, Like, what if the Bucks get blown out by Philly? Todd Bulls out. Maybe Belichick goes there and uh, builds something. So um, there's a lot of potential options for Bill. So... It is going to be interesting to see where he winds up. Okay, Alabama. Um, they've made a decision, and they've chosen to hire Washington's Kalen DeBoer. I think this is a decent hire. I would have liked this hire better than Dan Lanning, but I believe that there are better guys to hire if you're Alabama. I guess Dabo didn't want to pay his ridiculous buyout. Lane's happy it'll miss. Kirby has the number one class coming to Georgia. So, oh, and then Sark's happy at Texas. So DeBoer's the choice. Um, He has done a fantastic job in Washington, and he was really good on the FCS level, too. And... He um, was really good at Fresno before going to Washington. Um, actually, he wasn't in the FCS. I thought he was in the FCS. He was in the NAIA, and he was really good in, in there. And I think that he was a high school assistant coach in the late 90s to his rise to Alabama was just a great rise. And he was... um, Fresno State, then Washington. Now he's going to be at Alabama. I think this is a decent hire. Give this hire a B. Um, They could have done better, but it also could have been worse. And like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Dan Lanning. I just 
think that um, his team's choked too many times in big spots. Mimel DeBoer gets so much out of his teams wherever he is, whether it's Fresno or Washington or in the uh, NAIA with a couple of those titles. Um, So we'll see how this works out. And obviously uh, guys are um, transferring out of Bama. Uh, The first in the portal, um, wide receiver Isaiah Bond. Um, so Alabama's going to see some turnover and it might be a little bit before they're great again. And now they think about it, that was a missed opportunity for them. If they were able to beat, um, Michigan, they would have beat Washington and won the title. And now it feels like that program's window is closed for a while with Georgia being on the rise and, um, you have LSU, who's usually good. So Alabama might be in a little bit of a uh, a lull for their standards, considering um, the SEC. And then you have Oklahoma and Texas joined the conference as well. And they're going to be good, obviously. I'm not saying Alabama's going to be bad. I just am saying that they might be, at this time... 10 months from now where Clemson was 10 months ago or or two months ago. And I actually thought that that had a chance to be Alabama this season, but that obviously wasn't the case. They ended up making the college football playoff. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can get any more people in the portal, if they get any flips, maybe they get some Washington players after the board leaves. So um, keep an eye on, Alabama um, with um, what's to come there. Okay, the picks for Wild Card Weekend official. I gave out pretty much my leans, but these are going to be my official picks. Browns, Texans, tomorrow 4.30 on NBC. My projections pick up in 43 and 4 fifths, and it's 2.5 and, and 44 and a half. I'm going to take the Texans getting the two and a half. I think that um, the Texans are a team that is motivated. Um, They have a young franchise quarterback that wants to shine on the big stage. Um, Meanwhile, the Browns have a quarterback that is Proven in these spots, but it's been a long time since we've seen Joe Flacco play in this big of a game. Maybe he turns back into a pumpkin. And sitting him last week was proven to be the wrong decision in a way because of rust. But I don't really... At gunpoint. point, I think the Browns win a close one. Maybe um, Texans are driving for the win and Kai Farbane, uh, Farbane, the kicker, misses a field goal like he did against Jacksonville a couple weeks ago. So um, I'm going to take the Texans getting the 2 and a half against the Browns for the first game. 8 o'clock on Peacock, Dolphins-Chiefs. Um, not a fan of this game being on Peacock. You know the fan bases of these respective teams aren't a fan of it. Um, oh, and an announcers. We forgot to... Um, Go over the announcers for um, Wild Card Weekend. Um, so I think Tariko and Collinsworth are doing um, the Peacock game. Um, and maybe Noah Eagle. Um, we'll be doing uh, the first game in Houston. So here we go. Um, yes, I called it. Noah Eagle and Todd Blackledge. And in Miami, 
Mike Tarico, Jason Garrett. Oh, oh, oh. So Collins were skipping that one. I don't blame him for uh, skipping Peacock because um, I think that uh, America wants to see Chris Collinsworth and uh, on uh, the big NBC. Um, so Dolphins Chiefs. It looks like it's Mike Tarico and Jason Garrett. My line is Chiefs by six total forty. Five and thirteen twentieths, and it's four and a half and forty four. Um, so I have a one and a half point edge on the Chiefs, and I have a over one and a half point edge on the over. Um, I'm gonna do a contrarian over. Everyone loves the under because of the weather, but all it takes is one special teams touchdown or um a pick six from Tua or Mahomes, the way Mahomes has played this year. Um, But I think the over is not inconceivable. Or maybe this is a um, 21-21, 20-20, 23-23 game. And um, this could go over. So I'm going to do a contrarian over on that one. 1 o'clock on CBS, Steelers, Bills, Jim Nance, Tony Romo, and Tracy Wilson on the call. Um, Bills 6, total 49 tenths, and it's 9.5 and, and 33.5. And I love the over. Um, I know there's reported snow, so the total went down a lot. Um, I probably am going to put a little bit on the Steelers as well in this game. But I might also do... Bill's money line with some other money lines to hedge a Steelers future that I have from before the season. So Steelers Bill's pick is going to be the over 33 and a half. And like I said, just like the Chiefs game, um, all it takes is a fumble return for touchdown, a pick six, a special teams miscue, whatever. One big play from Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs, for what we know. 440 on Fox. Packers, Cowboys, Kevin Burkhart, Greg Olson on the call. Um, My line's Cowboys by 10, total 45 and three quarters, and it's 7 and 50 and a half. Um, I like the under here. Um, That's a high total. Um, Jordan loves to ever play in a game of this magnitude. Um... I think there's going to be some pressure on Dallas. Um, I think they're a team that can just milk the clock a lot. Um, 26 or hmm, 30-20 is realistic. 30-17, 28-17 works. So I'm going to go under 50 and a half for this one because I have an over four point, a four and a half point edge on the on their weight. Um, very, very nice of an edge there. So I'm going to go under 50 and a half. And then Sunday night is Rams Lions. That's going to be Mike Tirico and Chris Consort. So Mike Tirico is going to do back to back because he's awesome. Um, and then we'll see our, Pal Chris Collinsworth doing the, oh, Stafford back in Detroit. Oh, God, against his former team. You know how Collinsworth is. He's going to be all over that subplot. And just like Burkhardt also going to be all over um, uh, McCarthy against his old team. And then, obviously, the other one is Tyree Kill back in Kansas City, which I forgot to mention earlier and I mentioned it on the regular show today too. Um my line is Lions by seven total forty eight and three twentieths and it's three and fifty one and a half. Um so I'm gonna lay to three at the Lions. This is also a hedge against the Rams NFC bet that I made. Um I might do Lions money line too with some other stuff in the NBA or in the NHL come Sunday. 
as well, and maybe college basketball. Oh, and obviously soccer, too. So the teams I have futures on, I'm going to be hedging a lot just to um, get some money back. You know what I mean? So uh, although I might throw Steelers plus the points in that game. So I'm going to lay the three with the Lions against the Rams. And then I'm going to give out a lean for Monday night because there's a little time. We have Eagles, Bucks. I have Pickham in 45 and 320. It's, um, and it's Eagles by 3, 12, 43 and a half. Um, my lean right now is Bucks plus three. I'm not going to bet it because I'm going to wait till Monday to bet it. There could be more injuries and whatnot. And maybe the total moves and, um, I may have a different edge on something else. So, um, I have a slight ledge to the over, and then I would bet the box if I were to bet it right now, but come, let's come back on Monday, and I'll give out my official pick for that game. Um, so that's really it for... Um, Football and picks and whatnot. Um, and by the way, did you guys see um, Wayne Kiffin's cryptic, cryptic tweet regarding um, Bama hiring DeBoer? Which is crazy. Um, and then Sark um, confirmed that he was staying at Texas. And then uh, Mike Norvell got the eight year $80 million extension from Florida State as he sticks there. So, um, again, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and we will talk to you on Monday.